Getting the COVID vaccine is extremely important for everyone because we know how bad the pandemic is and how hundreds of thousands of people have died in the United States and millions of people now have died across, across the world. This is something we haven't seen in more than 100 years. And uh, the, one of the ways, or really the best way we're gonna contain it is to um, take the vaccine. We're very lucky that we have a vaccine so quickly and we ought to avail ourselves of it. The vaccines that have been developed for COVID are unique in that they're a new type of vaccine. They're uh, called a messenger RNA, mRNA vaccine. Uh, we have not had an MRA, mRNA vaccine before. And these are much safer than vaccines that we used in the past. In the past, we used inactive germs and would inoculate the people with, with the germs. Uh, that's, we're not doing that now. We're inoculating them with a code to make a protein to fight off um, the infection. And so uh, we don't have very long range results because this is brand new, uh, but they have been working on these for 30 or 40 years, this type, uh, this type of inoculation. And we are lucky that they um, got it to work for, uh, for, for the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is what causes COVID-19. People often worry about side effects of a vaccine. Most of what we worry about are pretty much the allergic type reactions that happen uh, within the first four hours of someone getting a vaccine. And there, are, there can be a serious reaction. People can have something called anaphylaxis, which is a, a fairly severe allergic reaction. It's very, very uncommon. Um, they could also get some uh, cutaneous skin type um, issues with itching or, or a little bit of um, redness in their skin. There can be some mild respiratory conditions. Um, they can get a, their blood pressure can go up, their blood pressure can go down. But, but we are not seeing this. We have already vaccinated uh, more than 15,000 people in our system. We've seen very, very few reactions, and most of them are, um, do, require no treatment other than observation, and a few of them have required minimal intervention. But the, um, the side effects are few and far between, and the safety far outweighs the, the side effects. So as you may know, the vaccines for coronavirus were developed more rapidly than probably vaccines for any, anything in history. And um, what, what they relied on was much of the science that has been developed in the past 30 or 40 years in developing a messenger RNA vaccine. And they were able to take the genetic material of this virus and apply it to all of that 30 or 40 years of knowledge and actually create an effective vaccine. But the one thing we can rely on is that no corners were cut because the FDA is very, very stringent about the different steps and the different uh, phases a vaccine needs to go through before it can come to market. And one of those is something called phase three trials. And in phase three trials, you need at least 30,000 people um, to take the vaccine, as well as a placebo group, a group who are getting an injection, but they don't have the, does not have the active vaccine in it. And we compare the results of those two groups. And the, um, the vaccines that are available now, uh, one of the vaccines did have its 30,000 uh, people in its phase three trial, and the other vaccine actually had 44,000 people in its phase three trial. So these vaccines went through the same trial as a vaccine that might have taken 10 years to develop. So we do not have to worry that because it came to us quickly, that it has not gone through the rigors that it needed to go through. So currently we have two vaccines available to us. We are actually using both vaccines in the RWJ Barnabas Health System. One of those is the Pfizer vaccine and one is the vaccine from Moderna. Uh, they're very similar and they're both mRNA vaccines. Um, they both need two doses. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine is two doses three weeks apart. The Moderna vaccine is two doses four weeks apart. Uh, the, the way they act in the body is very, very similar. We have other vaccines that are coming, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, that works slightly differently, but the two vaccines that are on the market currently are very, very similar uh, in mode of action. So the vaccines that people are used to are when we took a germ and made the germ somewhat inactive, and we would give that, that germ back to a patient to stimulate their immune system. And so very often, 
Um, not very often, but there were times when that could go awry and people get much sicker from the vaccine than, than we would hope. Now, we have something called a messenger RNA vaccine. And what scientists have done is that they have taken the genetic material from the virus and have, have programmed a protein to, to mimic um, what, the, what the virus does in your system. And there's something called a, a spike protein on the virus. When you see pictures of the virus, it's often depicted as a ball with all these spikes coming off of it. Those are called spike proteins. And the, what the, um, the scientists have done is they have coded a protein to attack those spike proteins. And so when they put that protein into our body, our body gets programmed to attack spike protein. And when the virus actually does come to a person, the, person, the body has, now has these proteins in it to attack the virus. It's very complicated. It's really uh, Star Wars um, technology and science, but it's fascinating that we, we have learned to um, teach the body to attack those spike proteins. So people wonder, does the vaccine change their DNA? So the DNA is the, is the uh, makeup of, of your body, um, your proteins. It doesn't change it at all. What it does is it works within that system uh, to have your body create a protein to fight off the virus. So it doesn't change you. It just gives you the availability and, and the capability of creating this antibody that will fight off the virus. You still have the same DNA. Um, after the injection as you had before the in injection. It doesn't change your DNA at all. People often ask if you can get COVID from the vaccine. Um, you cannot get COVID from the vaccine because the vaccine is a protein against COVID and it is not actually uh, the COVID molecule. The old vaccines where we, we actually use the germ to inoculate people, a, a, um, a less um, virulent version of the germ, those people could actually get the disease, but you cannot get the disease uh, from the COVID vaccine. You can get symptoms uh, that usually last less than 24 hours, or 24 to 48 hours, and, um, but you do not have the, have the disease by any means. It's just your body's reaction to the development of, of the protein. Of course, the million dollar question is how long will I be safe if I've had the disease and or if I've gotten the vaccine? The answer to that is we really don't know the answer. However, um, we have started to understand the virus better. So we are about one full year into the pandemic and we know that people are not getting sick again. People are not coming back to our emergency departments with a reinfection of COVID. Now, COVID unfortunately does linger in some people and they have a post-COVID syndrome where they still have uh, symptoms. That's different from being reinfected. We are not seeing people with new COVID infections, which tells us that the natural immunity that they had from getting the virus has protected them now uh, in many cases for at least one year. Um, we, we, we can only follow it and see what that does. The immunity that they get from the vaccine uh, especially with two doses of the vaccine, will probably even be a higher level of antibody in their system, which will probably give them an even longer uh, period um, uh, COVID-free or virus-free. But again, this is something we will learn as, as time goes by. Many people are talking about the new strain of, of COVID um, that, that is... Um, in Europe and now in the United States, unfortunately. Uh, what we know about that thus far is that it spreads more quickly, uh, but it has the same level of um, virulence, the same. It, people will not be sicker from that strain of the virus. And in fact, uh, from everything we know so far, the genetic code is so similar that the vaccines will be as effective in that strain as they are in the strain that we originally worked with. You know, one of the misconceptions um, that you hear or you read about or people talk about is um, who is the vaccine for? 
and, and they say it's for different groups of people. The vaccine is for everybody. The vaccine was tested in multiracial and ethnic groups to be sure that we covered the bases and that the vaccine reacted the same way and did the same thing in, um, in every different um, uh, population that we could isolate. So vaccines were first released in New Jersey to all of the acute care hospitals and the long-term care facilities. But only a week after that, vaccines started to um, come, become available on something called megasites, which are um, really all, coming all over the state, as well as uh, there will be a significant number of microsites. So the megasites are very often in uh, very um, well-known places. Uh, there's, there was one in the uh, building that used to be the Sears at Livingston Mall. There's one that used to be the Sears at Rockaway Mall. There's one in West Orange that used to be a Kmart. Uh, they're in locations that people know they can get to, they can park. They're large facilities that can manage a lot of people and still manage social distancing. Um, ShopRites now have, uh, many ShopRites in New Jersey uh, now have vaccines available. Many health departments, many federal qualified health centers um, as um, there, there's going to be, uh, I believe, vaccine on every corner. Um, right now, there are more than 100 sites available in New Jersey. And um, we'll, by, um, by the end of January, there'll be probably 200 sites available in New Jersey. So vaccine will be available. It'll be available close to everyone's home. And it is the safest, smartest thing to do to protect yourself, your family, your, your workers, and, and do your part to help stop this terrible virus. Get vaccinated. People ask, when, when will we be normal again? When will we get back to our regular lives? I think for that to happen, we have to see a few things. Uh, we have to see a significant number of people vaccinated, and we have to see the transmission rate of the, of the disease drop significantly, and we have to get back into something called the containment phase. Uh, currently, we are still in a terrible community spread phase. Um, we almost reached a containment phase back in, the, in this past summer, in the summer of 2020, when we, um, in July and August, we really saw the numbers go down and we saw probably the lowest numbers were mid-September. And then mid-September, we turned and started to rise again. I think between the vaccine and the things that people are doing uh, and the change in weather, which does uh, tamp down the virus, um, by this summer, um, I think we will start to feel very normal. I have in fact gotten the vaccine. Um, I got the vaccine. Um, I was not first in line because I am not a frontline provider, but I am a vaccinator. So because I am vaccinating people, uh, we have vaccinated all the people who are working in our clinics. And so I am volunteering in our clinics. So that is why I've gotten the vaccination. Um, had I not uh, been able to get it for that reason. I'd have been first in line for when I became available to get it because I'm a very strong believer in science and I am a very strong believer that this vaccine is going to help us and in, in, in many cases save our lives.